Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Double Portion Kingdom Ministries. Welcome everyone to this Resurrection Sunday. He is Lord, he is risen, and we are here to celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are here to lift his name up. We are here to go higher into his presence. Um, uh, Prophetess Paulette Denise, along with Pastor Don Turner, we are here this morning just to give God all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Get ready to hear what the Spirit of the Lord will say to us as we go higher into praise and worship, as we go higher into scripture, into prayer on this morning. I want to remind everyone, if you have not already, get your communion, grab something for communion at the end of the word today. We will be partaking of communion together um, on this Resurrection Sunday. He is risen. We're actually carrying on from last week when we talked about the Passover. We're carrying on this week that he is risen, that he is risen. And so on this morning, Mama Irma, if you go ahead and, and unmute your phone, I, I, I didn't mute it on my end, so you can just take the mute option off of your phone and we'll be ready to go forward with scripture on this morning. Pre oh, you have to press star six, Mama Irma. You press star six. I see it on you. You've now go speak. Good morning, everyone. Happy Resurrection Day. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture will be coming from Matthew 16, verses 21 and 22. It reads as thus. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. May the Lord have a blessing on the reading of the word. Amen. And so we come forth with prayer right now. God, we thank you and we praise you for that word that has just gone forward. We thank you, God, that you get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. Yes, it was spoken, spoken that things were going on. We thank you, God, that you get the glory. God, we praise you, we magnify you, and we lift you. Even as the scripture was spoken on the third day that you knew you were going to get up. And so we come celebrating this morning the rising of the sun. We thank you for he is risen, being tattooed across the minds of everyone on today, that it's not about an Easter bunny or some chocolate, I will eat it, but that's not what it's about. We just give you access that you would speak to us, God. Right now, we, the double portion kingdom ministry, we just come decreasing that you, oh God, would increase in us, God, that you would speak to us, God, as we go forward into worship, as Pastor Don and myself co-bring this word this morning, we thank Thank you, God, that we have ears to hear and our hearts are receptive to hear what thus says the Lord on this day called today. I pray over all uh, the everyone that's on the list that is called in. I pray over our family, friends, and loved one. I thank you for your safety and your protection being over us, even as some will uh, uh, partake of a holiday on today, God. Thank you for being our spiritual vaccination, that you cover us from any hurt, harm, and danger, that you would be with us. I pray over those that are dealing and seeking employment, those that are seeking um, career changes, even those that are seeking for the needs of their homes to be met. God, we press into your presence. We press into the glory because you said in your word that you, oh God, cause all of our needs to be met according to your riches in glory. So right now we press into the glory realm. Anyone that's in that need, we press into the glory realm for to understand you more, God, that there would be a shift and a transference and a manifestation in the natural realm of those things that you've provided for 
us in the glory realm that it would manifest thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven we lift up our family life situations whether married unmarried whether in a blend or believe in you for marriage god we pray right now and we ask you to cover our households that you would be our jehovah ishi the lord our husbandman as we are the bride of christ that's part of what resurrection was about helping us be installed as the bride of christ and so we give you access god to move in our homes move in our families god that you would strengthen that which remain even as we've been um, on this thing about family healing heal our families even as families get together on today whether it's via zoom in person on the phone call let your healing virtue let each and every one of us be the light in the midst of whatever is going on that your healing virtue would go forward that your healing virtue would be released god we thank you that we will walk in resurrection power on this day called today that you get the glory you get the honor you get the praise and as we prepare our hearts to go further into worship search our hearts oh lord and if there be any way in us that's not like you lead us in your way everlasting god that you would be glorified in our lives that you would be glorified in each and everything that we do we thank you that our hearts are being prepared as good ground to receive the seed of your word on this morning we'll continually praise you glorify you magnify you and exalt you oh god thank you for your healing virtue and your healing anointing and your healing power being here in our presence as we go forth on today that if there is any sickness or disease that has formed it is just a weapon that is formed that will not prosper and you oh god will get the glory we magnify you and we exalt you in jesus name we pray and we pray. hallelujah Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you all praise today for who you are. Death couldn't hold you more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has risen from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, magnify the Lord with me this morning and bless his holy name. Because you see, he died on a cross at Calvary, but that's not the end of the story. He didn't stay down. On the third day, he rose for me and for you. Good morning, good morning, good morning, double portion. I come this morning with good news. He has risen. He has risen. Let everything that had breath this morning praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Be his mercy endure forever. Be why? Because he has risen. He has risen. Death couldn't hold him down. 
he has risen. He has risen. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, each and every one of you for being a part of Double Portion Kingdom Ministries on this Resurrection Sunday 2021. I don't know about anybody else here, but I got a lot to be thankful about. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side this past year, where would I be? So God, I thank you. I thank you that you rose, that you didn't stay down, that you rose from me. Ah, hallelujah. And bless God. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning. Mm -hmm. The spirit of worship is in the house this morning. The spirit of worship. We're going to talk this morning for a little while from a uh, somatic subject of the climax of history, the climax of history or the climax of his story. Jesus, because he has risen. Come on, somebody. The climax of his story. Hallelujah. And bless God. And bless God. Hey, 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 hey. He has risen. He didn't stay down. The, the grave couldn't hold him down. <laughs> oh, thank you, God. You know, people of God, without the resurrection, the Christian faith has no hope to rest upon. But if God raised Jesus from the dead, Nothing else really matters, does it? And no one can argue that Christianity is true. All believers doubt their faith from time to time. Plus, this is Resurrection Sunday, 2020. Today, I think it's an ideal time to help double portion understand just how reliable the histor historical accounts of the resurrection are. What, what did I say? I think that it's a perfect time to help double portion to understand just how reliable the historical accounts of the resurrection are. Come on, somebody. There are several passages in the New Testament that touch on the uh, validity of the resurrection. But for the sake of time on this Resurrection Sunday, because we know you all have plans and you know you're either going to eat with your family or you could zoom with your family and you, you got you got something to do. So we're not planning on keeping you long this morning because actually I will be traveling a little bit more this morning as well uh, as I make my rounds and spend time with my family this morning. It's all about family this morning, this family. Uh, he rose so that you could rise. He rose so that your family could rise. So on this Resurrection Sunday, uh, I admonish each and every one of you. If there's some uh, awe between you and a family member, if there's been some dissension in your family, I admonish you this morning on Easter Sunday to reach out to your family, reach out to your family members and make amends. Uh, we know that people are dropping on the left and on the right from this pandemic and all the other stuff that's going on in the world. So I believe that on this Resurrection Sunday, it would be a good time to make amends with that family member. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the Lord said, you have to reach out to him. Well, well, Pastor Don, you don't know what they did. It's okay. God knows. But as a man or woman of God, you have to be the bigger one on today to reach out to him. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. So this morning, we'll just focus on the, the following two scriptures. Pastor Paulette. All right. Well, the first scripture will be found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's a large section of scripture, but we will read it here at um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. And I'll be reading out of the Passion Translation. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 11. It says, Dear friends, let me give you clearly the heart of the gospel that I've preached to you, the good news that you have heartily received and on which you stand. For it is through the revelation of the gospel that you are being saved. If you fasten your life firmly to the message I've taught you, unless you've believed in vain. For I have shared with you what I have received and what is of utmost importance, the Messiah died for our sins, fulfilling the prophecies of scripture. He was buried in a tomb and was raised from the dead after three days as foretold in the scriptures. Then he appeared to Peter, the rock, and to the 12 apostles. 
He also appeared to more than 500 of his followers at the same time, most of whom are still alive as I write this, though a few have passed away. Then he appeared to Jacob and to all the apostles. Last of all, he appeared in front of me like one born prematurely ripped from the womb. Isn't it interesting how the passion translates that? Keep reading. It says, yes, I am the most insignificant of all the apostles, unworthy even to be called an apostle because I hunted down believers and persecuted God's church. But God's amazing grace has yes. made me who I am and it is, and it and his grace to me was not fruitless. In fact, I worked harder than all the rest, yet not in my own strength, but God's for his empowering grace is poured out upon me. So this is what we all have taught you. And whether it was through me or someone else, you now have believed the gospel. And then our second scripture is coming out of John chapter 21, John chapter 21, verse 24 through 25. And it reads, I, John, am that apostle who has written these things to testify of the truth. And we know that what I've documented is accurate. Jesus did countless things that I haven't included here. And if every one of his works were written down and described one by one, I suppose that the world itself wouldn't have enough room to contain the books that would have been written. Lord, thank you for blessing the word. Pastor Don, I yield back to you. God, we thank you for the word. We thank you, God, that your word never goes out and come back void. Now, God, as we uh, dive farther into this Resurrection Sunday, we ask that you give us preaching and teaching power, God. We ask that you anoint these lips of clay. We ask that you anoint the people's ears to hear. Uh, Holy Spirit, anoint me afresh. Have your way. Hide me behind your cross. God, do what you want to do this morning. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah and bless God. Well, people of God, I want you to imagine something this morning, double portion. I pose a question to you. Suppose your father had died and, and you went to the funeral and you were at the gravesite un, until the, the tomb was sealed. And then three days later, you walked into Walmart and, and, and you were walking down an aisle and there you saw your father. You walked up to him and said, dad, and he replied, yes, son, and he embraced you. Another friend was, was there with you who was also at the funeral, and he saw your father also. And then a, another 15 friends were also at the funeral, and they were in Walmart, and they saw your father as well. Well, double portion, that's exactly what happened with Jesus. All the apostles saw him and then up to 500 people saw him at once. So as we dive this morning into his story, the climax of his story, of history, of his story, we want to uh, speak to you from uh, a few topics. And the first topic we're going to talk about is, is, is four eyewitness reports of the resurrection. Four eyewitness reports of the resurrection. Amen. One of the biggest arguments against the resurrection is that if it had really happened, wouldn't people write about it? Mm. Uh, wouldn't people write about it? Or, or, or why aren't there any accounts of it outside of the Bible? Well, the problem with this reasoning this morning is that it assumes that the four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, John didn't count as eyewitness accounts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were all apostles who were in Jesus's camp, who spent time with Jesus going in, in, in the highways and byways and, and, and when Jesus was preaching and when he was doing miracles and when he went to the temple. So I beg to differ. Each and every one of these men had firsthand accounts of what Jesus did. They were by his side. You know, if someone would have asked you, well, what was your daddy like? Then you could give them an eyewitness account of what your daddy was like because you spent time with your daddy. You, you, you knew him better than a lot of people knew him, you know? So uh, the argument that uh, why aren't there any eyewitness accounts, mm, that can't fly. 
because there are four eyewitness accounts. And then it says, well, uh, why are there not accounts outside of the Bible? Mm. The Bible is written on the authority of God's word. So if any book that's written is non-fictional, then that's got to be the Bible. So I don't know about you, but I believe God's word. People of God, do you know that for any situation you're in in life, there is an answer in the Bible basic instructions before leaving earth. Come on, somebody. And, 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 and Dr. Google has made it so easy these days. If you're having a problem with despair, if you're having a problem with depression, if you're having a problem with finances, if you're having a problem with a wayward child, all you got to do is tap into Dr. Google and say, scripture on depression. And Dr. Google will give you everything that the, that's inspired in the Bible about your situation. Come on, somebody. So I believe that Jesus' disciples were the most equipped people to provide a record of his ministry and his resurrection, and they all did. Uh, most people believe that a man named John Mark wrote the Gospel of Mark. You know, we, we, we look back in the Bible, maybe in the book of Acts, and it talks about after Barnabas and Saul had delivered a, a, the charitable offering for relief, they left Jerusalem bringing with them a disciple named Mark, who was also known as John. So that's some learning right there. Uh, the disciple Mark was actually John Mark. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, yeah, there were four eye eyewitness counts of the resurrection. But then there's a theory that, uh, let's talk about that no one moved the body. There's a theory out there in, modern Christendom in, 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 uh, in Christian apologetics, where atheists talk about uh, that someone moved Jesus's body. Someone moved Jesus's body. I come to you this morning and uh, I submit to you that no one moved the body. Why do you say that, Pastor Don? I say it because of this. If someone found Jesus's body, it would be completely discreet, it, I'm sorry, it would completely discredit the narrative that Jesus rose from the dead. If someone found Jesus's body, it would completely discredit the narrative that Jesus rose from the dead. Mm. Naturally, people argue if Jesus's body wasn't in the tomb, then his followers, the disciples must have moved it making the resurrection a host. Mm. Mm -mm. No, double portion this morning, I'm here to inform you that that argument doesn't work. Why does that argument not work, Pastor Don? I'm glad you asked. Double portion, since the disciples had no expectation that Jesus was, would rise from the dead, it was clearly that they missed all of, all of Jesus's predictions of that act. Thus, they had no need to invent a hoax. You see, the, the disciples weren't much different than most first century Jewish Christian people. The only difference was is that they had the opportunity to be inside of Jesus's camp. They were in his personal circle, amen? They believed though, that Jesus would restore the kingdom of Israel by toppling Rome's oppressive rule. The disciples actually, y'all, thought that the movement ended when Jesus died. Mm. They were clearly confused about their next steps. I hear you, God. And despite Jesus's numerous hints that he would come back from the dead, the disciples, although they rock with Jesus, they didn't get it. In the book of John, uh, around 2 and 19, it says, Jesus answered, destroy the temple and I will raise it up again in three days. See, Jesus spoke in parables, y'all. So the disciples thought that Jesus was speaking about uh, destroying the physical temple. No, he was talking about them destroying the temple of God, him. And then he rising from the dead in three days. Amen. 
In Matthew uh, chapter 12, verses 39 and 40, Jesus replied, only evil people who are unfaithful to God will demand a sign. There will be no sign given to you ex except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Watch this, people of God. For as Jonah was in the belly of a huge sea creature, the belly of the well, for three days and three nights. Come on, somebody. Jesus in the grave, three days and three nights. And it says, so the son of man will be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. <clears throat> Buried in the grave. Come on, somebody. Uh, Matthew 16 and 21. It says, from then on, Jesus began to clearly reveal to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer injustice from the elders, leading priests, and religious scholars. How many of you know that it wasn't the Romans that really crucified Jesus? Uh, uh, the Romans carried out the act, but it was the religious people, y'all. It was the church people. It was the Sadducees and the Pharisees mm, that had Jesus crucified. Be careful. Be careful of the religious spirit. You know, Jesus talked about, uh, about a kingdom. He didn't talk about religion. Now, religion is good, but we can't get caught up in religion, in the doctrines of religion, okay? We can't allow ourselves to go so far left, okay, that we don't see the forest from the trees, amen? You know, uh, it's not about religion, people of God. You know, they got people in the church that are going to burn in hell. All right. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Just because you're on the names of a church role. OK, doesn't make you a kingdom citizen. It doesn't make you a kingdom ambassador. The Bible says, seek first ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. Amen. So I'd rather be a kingdom ambassador any day than a church member. Yes, I belong to a church. OK, but my relationship isn't based on Grace Temple and Little Rock, Arkansas. As a matter of fact, I live in one state and my church is in another. Amen. Hallelujah. And bless God. Hallelujah. So Matthew 16 and 21. From then on, Jesus began to clearly reveal to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer injustice from the elders, leading priests, and religious scholars. He also explained that he would be killed and in three days be raised to life again. But guess what, y'all? The disciples still didn't understand what Jesus was trying to say. Hallelujah. Matthew 16 and 22. Watch this. Peter took him aside, Jesus, to correct him privately. He reprimanded Jesus over and over, saying to him, God forbid, master, spare yourself. You must never let this happen to you. And what did Pete, uh, uh, Jesus say after that? He said, get behind me, Satan. Hmm, I hear you, God. The enemy will allow people in your camp to get in the way of what, uh, 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 to get in the way of you walking in your divine destiny. Let me say that again. Be careful because the enemy uh, will uh, use people in your camp to get in the way of your divine destiny. Now, Jesus had to go to the cross, okay? Jesus had to go to the cross for you and for me and so that all our sins could be forgiven. But here was Peter, y'all, a disciple that rolled with Jesus. His, his ride or die disciple, Peter the rock, the man that cut the, 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 the soldier's ear off. Peter was body body for Jesus, but the enemy was trying to use Peter to keep Jesus from going to the cross. Come on, somebody. You know, Jesus' enemies were listening. Okay, they were listening when Peter said that. So they sealed the tomb and, and, and placed armed guards, y'all, in the front of the tomb, specifically because they had heard Jesus say, that he would rise from the dead in three days. So they put gorilla glue on the tomb and, and they put some 
some men outside with weapons. They were concerned that the disciples may come and try to steal his body. Even if the disciples were paying attention to this, even if they could uh, somehow be able to overpower the guards and break the seal on the tomb, this still leaves us with another question, double portion. Why would so many people die for a lie? Hmm. Hallelujah. Church history holds that all the apostles were martyred, y'all. They lost their lives because of what they believed. James, the brother of John, is the only apostle besides Judas Iscariot, whose death is recorded in the Bible. But they all lost their lives for the gospel. They believed that Jesus hung on the cross, that he died, and that he went to the grave, and that he was rose. And they believed that so much till they lost their life for it. So why would people die for a lie? Hallelujah. Even when you set uh, martyrdom aside, early Jesus followers faced all kinds of persecution, y'all. Not only from the Roman government, but they faced persecution from the church. Why? They faced persecution from the church because they were speaking the truth. And the religious scholars and the church people were, had their heads so far up in the air that they couldn't even understand that, that the Messiah had come, that the prophecy from the Old Testament had been fulfilled because they were so stuck in religious tradition. Come on, somebody. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Yes, religion has a part. Yes, we need to assemble. Yes, we need to fellowship with like believers. But that's not how the story ends. You know, that's not how the story ends. I don't make it in because of my church affiliation. I make it in because of my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Mm. Above all else, people of God, the authority persecuted the apostles because they taught that Jesus was divine and that he had risen from the dead. They couldn't have recanted it at any time to make it stop. They, they could have recanted it at any time to make it stop. What are you saying? I'm saying when they were faced with death, they could have said, okay, it was all a lie so that they, they could spare their lives, but they didn't. They continued spreading the gospel of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, even though it cost them their lives, people of God. The disciples could have told the world that they'd made it all up and, and, and that the resurrection was a host and they could have avoided their death. But the disciples knew one thing, mm, catch this, because he rose, I can rise. Mm, come on, somebody. <coughs> No matter what this world throws to me, because he rose, I have the victory. The Bible says that the same spirit that raised Jesus lives inside of me. So if Jesus rose, guess what? Oh, I will rise. I will see. I will walk in victory. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So instead of recanning it, the disciples made it clear that they'd rather die than turn their backs on Jesus. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Even as they faced death, they knew that Jesus' resurrection meant that they could also overcome the grave if they trusted him. Oh, hallelujah. So on this resurrection Sunday morning double portion, I got a question for you. How far are you willing to go for Jesus this morning? Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm going all the way. Even if it costs me my life, I'm going all the way, Pastor Paulette. Amen. And so Pastor Don gave us our first two points of 
um, the four eyewitness reports of the resurrection. And he gave us some scriptural foundation of understanding that. And then the second point was that nobody moved, no one moved the body. That, that's a heresy. The, he has risen and that's really what happened. And then our third point as we close on today, point number three, that we want to walk away. Thank you, Pastor Don, for putting down the historicity of resurrection. And so point three is, what resurrection means to us today? What does it mean to you? What does it mean to Faye? What does it mean to Martin? What does it mean to Sheila? What does it mean to you in 2021? Yes, we've celebrated it. Even on last week, we talked about some things that we've known, and now it's beginning to make sense. Let's make Resurrection Sunday make sense to us. And so I went to one of my mentors that showed us what does it mean for resurrection? What does it really mean? The purpose of resurrection. This comes from Dr. Miles Monroe. And he said the purpose for the resurrection of Jesus Christ was to complete the final act of the redemptive plan of God. This is why. See, it, the enemy would want you to not believe in the resurrection and not know how to apply it to your life. So yes, you can go to church, but you would never plug into the power that's for you because you did, you're did. you saying, I understand resurrection, but now we will have a knowing. We will shore up our foundation in knowing what resurrection power means in my life. The other point and purpose of resurrection was to deliver the governor back to the earth. Jesus said, when I leave, I'm going to send another, the Holy Spirit. He is the active agent of the Godhead. Over and over and over on Double Portion Kingdom Ministries, we tell you about the role of Holy Spirit in our lives. And so on this year, as you get an understanding of Passover into resurrection, you will recognize and realize that you have Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, right there. He is our seal, oh Jesus. And then the last point is to read establish the kingdom of heaven on earth through the governor. The Holy Spirit is our helper. We are ambassadors. He's the governor. He's teaching us, leading us, guiding us into all truth. You say, Paulette, I don't know about that Holy Spirit. Well, here it is right here in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. This is the final resurrection act of our Lord Jesus Christ that uh, caused the governor of the kingdom, the Holy Spirit, to now, we now have access to him. So I'm just going to decree it in our hearing and then we'll be prepared to partake of communion as we examine our hearts. So John chapter 20, verse 19 through 20 in the Amplified, it says, then on that same first day of the week when it was evening, though the disciples were behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. Uh-oh, now the disciples are Jews, but they were scared of the Jews. Which ones? The religious ones, the ones that persecuted and killed Jesus. Okay, so they had fear of the Jews and Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace to you. The resurrected Jesus did a boom, look who stepped in the room and manifested in their presence. In some versions, it says he came through the door. He didn't even open the door. He just appeared in the room to them. Verse 20, it says, so, so saying, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy, with delight, with exaltation, with ecstasy, with rapture. <laughs> then Jesus said to them again, peace be to you. He, God, he understands we need a double portion of peace. He spoke peace in the beginning. When they were excited, he spoke peace again. Just as the father has sent me forth, so I am sending you. And having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the governor of the kingdom. Receive the title of being an ambassador. Receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 23, it says, now having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by him, he said, if you forgive the sins of anyone, then they are forgiven. But if you retain the sins of anyone, then they are retained. And so God, we thank you that we understand the resurrection power that you have given us access to. We even come right now preparing our hearts, God. We stand on your word and we say, search my heart, O Lord. And if there be anything in me that's not like you, anything that's contrary to the kingdom citizen that you have called me to be, forgive me, forgive me, O Lord, for my identification being tied to being a church member instead of a kingdom citizen. And so we say, examine our hearts. It even says, 
<clears throat> excuse me, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, examine your hearts as you're coming to the table of communion. So as we are preparing to go forward and to partake of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, we come right now, if there is anyone who does not know Jesus as their savior, we thank you for their hearts cry being, what must I do to be saved? Repent. We, we, we come right now when we bring forth the forgiveness of sin. Repent for living according to the world and now live according to the kingdom. Allow, he's breathing on you right now. Allow Holy Spirit to breathe on you and empower you as an, a kingdom ambassador for such a time as this. Allow Holy Spirit to manifest in your lives. So God, we thank you. Even that person that's on the line that said, I, I, I messed up too bad. Uh, the apostle Paul in one of the scriptures we read earlier, he said, I don't even feel that I should be called an apostle because I was so jacked up before Jesus met me, before I met Jesus, before I was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Even as Pastor Don always says, but God, yes, you were all of that. Where would I be without him? But because he loves me so much that the Holy Spirit is poured out. I acknowledge him in my life. And so now as we prepare to go forward and partake of communion, God, my heart is right before you. You, I'm forgiven. I'm able to forgive others. One of the other texts says, when you come to the altar, if you have an ought against somebody, stop and deal with that forgiveness. So right now we thank you for this place being an altar of forgiveness that we examine our heart. And if we're holding any harsh judgment against someone, if we're holding any bitterness against someone, any root of bitterness that's trying to stay in our heart because of the things and the situations and the circumstances that we've faced. But God, we thank you that we overcome those things so that we can walk in the anointing to destroy the yokes that are upon ourselves and others. We thank you, God, for this place of purification, for this place of purging as we're coming on this Resurrection Sunday, that we would resurrect in a newness and a power of you, oh God, that it's not just we're taking of communion elements, the cracker and the juice or the water or whatever we have, but we're coming and we're giving you access to speak to our hearts. So even as the text on last week that we closed with about communion and we said, we'll, we're not, we didn't partake last week, we prepped it for this week because he is risen and we're putting ourselves in remembrance. So Luke chapter 22, verse 14, we're at verse 14 in context, it's 17 through 23, we're at 14 right now. It says, and when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you that I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took in hand a cup and after giving thanks, he said, take this and share it among yourselves. You know, that cup was symbolic of the Holy Spirit that was to be poured out. Let's keep reading. Verse 18, he says, for I tell you, from now on, I will not drink the product of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. This is why I'm interjecting here. This is why Holy Spirit is allowing us to understand the parables of the kingdom so that we can understand what the product of the vine. It's us empowered by Holy Spirit. So now if you have your elements, verse 19, it says, and he took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and he gave it to them. And he said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so go ahead and let's eat of the bread. And he took that. Now we're at verse 20. And it says, and in the same manner, in the same way, the cup after they had eaten saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Go ahead and partake of the, the covenant, the cup, the blood of Jesus. He is risen. And then he said, behold, the hand of one of you is betraying me. <laughs> he, you're with me on this table for the son of man is going according to what has been determined, but woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And they began to debate among one another 
who of them it would be that was going to do this. And so God, we thank you that we're not debating. We're not going to be betrayers of the gospel. We will not be betrayers of the kingdom. We thank you that we put ourselves in remembrance that you are the body and the blood that you have sent us Holy Spirit, the governor of the kingdom to empower us as kingdom ambassadors. Now that we have a, a deeper understanding, a clearer understanding of what it means that he is risen. We're here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the resurrection of us as believers of Christ. We thank you and we praise you. Get the glory, oh God. Get the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless God. Well, we want to open the line at this time. If there is anyone online that wants to come up and say something on this Resurrection Sunday, the line is open now. You can just unmute your phone and, and we'll yield. Uh, I see in my comments, uh, Pastor uh, Scotty said, Pastor Don, you making this message stick. Amen. And we shall overcome. Is there anyone else that wants to come up at this time? Glory to God. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning, Faye. How y'all doing? Doing good. Good. Happy Easter Sunday. I just like to thank you guys for the portion that I've caught this morning. Forgive me, I overslept, but I enjoyed the, the portion that I was able to uh, be blessed to hear this morning. I would like to wish everyone a, a, a blessed holiday. He has risen. Um, a beautiful day for me. I would also love to ask the Lord to help me in being at crossroads uh, in life, not really knowing which way to go. And I would, I would like to ask for his help in discerning whatever he's telling me um, so that I know that it's from him um, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will Amen. definitely cover that in prayer. We'll lift up all of the prayers as you come forward, share what you're hearing on today. And if you have a prayer request, give us your prayer request and we will pray. Uncle Richard, I see your line is unmuted. Go right ahead. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. And I, I want to thank Dr. Don for such beautiful words he expressed this morning. But the most important thing was he rose. And that's, that's the second part. And the next two words they say, Resurrection Day, two words on each one. That's a blessing. And thank God for everything that double portion is done. We love you and we say, we keep it in your prayer as we go forward. Amen. 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 Is there anyone else that would like to come up before we cover the prayer request? Because I will be praying for Faye um, and that prayer request. And I just heard another prayer request that I'll be covering. Is there anyone else that would like to come up before we close and uh, cover the prayers? I would also like to add that it's a beautiful thing when you love God so much that you are willing to forsake all others. Uh, especially bad, you know, um, especially what other people may want you to do, but you know what God wants you to do. And it's a beautiful thing when you're so strong in that, that you, you don't mind sacrificing your life to the Lord because you know, you know what you're sacrificing for. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Wow. Well, let me just jump in here, right here, uh, Pastor Paulette, if you don't mind. Sure. Wow. Uh, Faye, the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Now, we know the context of that. And, and when he says man, he means kingdom citizen, okay? It means man, woman, because we're all created equal in his sight. Now, it says that a righteous man the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Let's just look at that for like a second. What is a righteous man? A righteous man is, it, it is a man or woman of God that walks in obedience with God. In other words, whew, if you do what God tells you to do, 
then then gotta propel you forward. Then your steps are ordered. You know, we spend a lot of time trying to figure things out, i.e. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, okay, which is the same spirit that raised Jesus, that, that lives with inside of you, Faye, and lives inside of me, and lives inside of Martin, and lives inside of Ezekiel. That same spirit that raised Jesus lives inside of us. So if we walk in obedience to God the Father, okay, then the Holy Spirit's job is to lead us and guide us in all truth. So that stuff that we are trying to figure out, mm, sounds like a job for Jesus to me. Actually, we can't figure it out because we weren't made to figure it out. We were made to worship him. And part of our worship is to walk in the spirit of obedience. So as we walk in the spirit of obedience, watch this. Mm. The more you worship God and the more you're obedient to God, the more God can trust you with secrets, okay? So as you continue to grow in the things of God and walk in obedience with God, Keisha, then God will reveal stuff to you. Your sense of discernment will be heightened. So I would admonish each and every person on this call today and on the YouTube, as a part of your daily prayer, ask God for a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost, okay? Because remember, the Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you in all truth. So if I'm so full of the Holy Ghost, okay, then that stuff that's out there that, that's taking me left or right, it's going to annoy me because the Holy Ghost is going to lead me and guide me in all truth. And if that mm -hmm. stuff over there is counterfeit or if it's false or if it's not real, then it's going to quicken my spirit and I'm going to know that that's not for me. A Amen. Hallelujah. I just needed to put that out there. Amen. Seek first ye the kingdom of God, but yeah. let's, let's be intentional about Thanks. our our relationship with Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. That is what the Lord is saying. Is there anyone else before uh, we do this prayer, this covering prayer, um, covering all of that, both Faye and Pastor Don and some things that Holy Spirit just put in my heart while we were talking. Um, I know that uh, Juanita and Dodie have, uh, Dodie has put a, a, a comment in there and I know Juanita is working. So Thank you for your continued comments. Good, uh, Pastor Paulette and uh, Pastor Don. Yeah. It's Clemens and the mm -hmm. family. Um, just asking you to keep me in prayer. It's been a little difficult the past few days. Okay. Just uh, just trying to stay strong through this process. Uh, this has been a long process, and um, you know I fought it a little bit with uh, staying on, on the on the right side of prayer and just been struggling with it. But uh, I'm hanging in there. I'm just asking y'all to continue to pray for me. Thank you very much. Amen. We will definitely be standing with you and covering you personally and your family as a whole as you're walking through the latter part of this trial that you're in. That's what I'm, I'm going to call it, the latter part. We're at the latter part of the trial. We're, we're coming out. God, I thank you. One more check. Is there anyone else before I go into prayer? Any other prayer requests that we need to pray? And I know if you can't... Um, come off you can type it in the chat and i'll see it there scotty did you have i see yes. scotty yes. and then we'll do ursula go scotty and then ursula okay. uh good morning to everybody and praise god i want to thank the double portion ministry for what all you guys are doing pastor don pastor paulette you guys have really laid that that uh resurrection out this morning it really it was really touching it brings back to mind all those things that god has that Jesus has done for us, and uh, we should be thankful. And a lot of times we try to do things our way, but we got to do like Pastor Don says, we got to seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these other things will happen. So uh, a lot of times I want to uh, solicit your prayers for my shoulder. I've been, uh, I've been under shoulder surgery for the past 
uh, four or five months. And just when I thought that I was getting ready to go back to work, the doctor said, no, you need to stay off work a little bit longer. So my plans are being put aside to what God's plans are for me. So I just pray that uh, he will continue to strengthen me and continue to strengthen my shoulder where I can be able to be restored, if not to 100%, to just to a functioning percent. You know, God is, will give us sufficiency in everything that we have to do for him. And I also, I'm often reminded of the thorn that was in uh, Paul's side. It continuously reminded him of the grace and the mercy that God had given him. And every time I think about my ailments that I have, I remember that God has this thorn in my side where I can remember that he has done all things for me and he will continue to do these things for me. And I just want to thank you guys for what y'all do each and every morning, Sunday morning that y'all do this. And I pray God for your success and your continued endeavors as you grow. And Don, I really enjoyed your message this morning. And you too, Paula, y'all just put it together so well and continue to grow in grace as God continue to bless the double portion kingdom. Thank you. Amen. We'll definitely cover that request. Ursula, go right ahead. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. Just wanted to say um, wonderful, well-taught lesson on this morning. Um, we are, um, we were reminded this morning that he is risen. And um, as I looked at scripture um, about he is risen, Matthew 28 and 6 says, for he has risen as he said. So today we we can understand and know that just as Jesus had spoken to his disciples, that he has now risen once again, and that we can believe in whatever promises that God has made unto us. For he is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. So we thank God for Resurrection Sunday. And as we celebrate, I pray that each and every one of you have a wonderful and blessed uh, Easter uh, on today. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that has a prayer request or something to share before we cover all that's been released in prayer? One more try. Okay. Uh, Sister Juanita, we will be uh, in agreement with you that you're taking care of Mr. Milton, the, that that all taking care of Mr. Milton will do their job, that his healing can go well regarding physical responsibilities, his salvation and deliverance. Oh, Jesus. Yes, God, his salvation and deliverance from perversion. God is going to deliver Resurrection Sunday. There will be some stuff that has to die so that the real person can be resurrected, that God would strengthen him. God, we thank you for the blessed word. So I'm just going to pray right there. God, we thank you for those that are at crossroads. Even I heard something about this season of Passover into resurrection is a season of transition. It's a season of, of the crossroads. It's a season of you getting the glory and the honor and the praise in our lives. And so we thank you, God, that in this season, of transition, that we would press into your presence for a heightened discernment. Thank you that we will say la in Proverbs 3 verses 5 through 6, that we acknowledge you in all of our ways, not sometimes, not maybe. It can be a daily devotion for the next 15 days that we meditate, say la, pause and calmly think in Proverbs chapter three, verses five through six. God will look at it in different versions and the passion and the in the message in the Lexingham. We'll just meditate in it that you would heighten our discernment, that we would acknowledge you and you will lead us. You will heighten our capacity. Discernment is knowing what's of you and what's not of you. It would be heightened in this time and in this season. And we thank you, God, for the um, 
the sacrifice of, that people are making unto you that you see and you know all sacrifices that are coming forward. So we thank you, God, that you get the glory and the honor. I pray right now, I lift up Sister Faye and everyone else that has had a loved one transition between last Resurrection Sunday and this Resurrection Sunday, because this is the first holiday without that loved one. And so we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our comforter, for being the spirit of peace in the midst of all that we're going through as we are celebrating. It is a beautiful day in most locations. And we thank you, God, that you would allow peace, as it was said twice, peace be to you, peace be to you in the midst of all that is going on, that you get the glory and the honor and the praise. And then I pray for those that are dealing with mental health maladies and challenges, oh God. I thank you that in this season, they will be healed, they will be set free, that they would walk in resurrection power to operate in a sound mind with the right mind, with the mind of Christ in this time and in this season, anything in their foundation that has been giving mental health issues, issues the ability to manifest that it be exposed right now by the light of resurrection in Jesus name. And so we even stand with brother Ron and brother Scotty as they're both going through healing processes where they've hurt, there, there was some type of malady, a physical ailment that required surgery and the, the resuscitation is taking a little bit longer in our time than we think that it should. And we thank you, God, for restoration. You sent your word and it healed the sick. You sent your word, oh God, and healing came forth. We thank you for the healing virtue and the healing power coming on your people like never before. Anyone that needs healing in there, John Smith, I lift him up to you as well as we're praying for this continued healing. There will be plateaus and sometimes they'll feel like it was moving, it was progressing, and then all of a sudden it was rough. I lift up that, that, that scenario that's happening with Brother Ron, and I thank you, God, for healing coming forth in this time and in this season. Let us not be moved by what we see or what we feel because pain has a voice and it's very loud. We silence the voice of pain and we hear that we are the healed, that you are our healer. We know you as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals us. And so we thank you for your word being a salve to our sore, your word being a healing balm to everywhere that is hurting us and aching us and paining us, that you get the glory, that you get the honor, that you get the praise. And we stand on your word there in Matthew 28, God, that Jesus, he said he was going to rise. And we pray for um, brother, Mr. Milton, God, and we thank you for deliverance. Thank you for the west wind of God blowing in deliverance, that it would blow out the spirit of perversion, that it be loosed at the roots by the wind of God. When wind blows, there's nothing that can hide from it. And so we thank you, God, for blowing away anyone attached to us that's dealing with spirits of perversion, spirits of lust. I even call out spirits of anger. I call out spirits of low self-esteem that cause those things because they operate in groups. And so we expose the entire group. I'm not playing with the fruit. I'm going for the root. And I thank you for the root of this thing being cauterized. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and it dried up at the root that very day. And so I thank you that the fruit of perversion and the fruit of anger and the fruit of low self-esteem and the fruit of lust be dried up at the root in your people that will press into your presence. And I thank you for the intercessors that will stand in the gap and decree and declare a thing and it shall be established. And even if the person we're praying for is guilty, just guilty is too, just wrong. God, we thank you that there will be a breakthrough, that you will break through. Something has to break, that there would be a breaking in the spirit, that the chains of bondage are being released off of your people on this resurrection Sunday. He is risen and now now we know why we say that. He is risen because I now have access to my helper, Holy Spirit. So I thank you that in this time of, of, of resuscitation and, and sufficiency being restored to Scotty and to Brother Clemens, God, that you would allow Holy Spirit to be made more known to them in this time and in this season, that they will know him more in this next year than they've known him in all the previous years, that he would reveal himself and re reveal the things of the Father and the Son's 
to them like never before. To all of us, it's not just for them, but because they're in a healing pattern where they're open and they're sensitive to the things of the spirit. I thank you, God. Any one of us can make ourselves open to hear from you. Speak to us, God. Your servants are here. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and bless God. Well, I want to make sure that everyone puts it on your calendar to join us for our identity movement. That's what I'm calling it. It is the identity movement 2021. It was going to be the retreat at Seeker Springs, but we had to postpone it due to life being shifting. But on uh, Thursday, March the 15th, the flock of men will be on the line at 8 p.m. Thursday, March the 15th at 8 p.m. And the women, we will be Saturday, April the 17th at 2 p.m. We will get together and we are discussing identity. It was going to be an identity retreat, but we will discuss an element of identity because Holy Spirit is speaking. He's speaking loud. He wants to be heard. We will yield and allow him to speak. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Pastor Don, I yield to you to cover us and bless us as we close out with praise and worship about the blood, the blood, the blood. Hallelujah. Amen and bless God. Well, thank you so much, each and every one of you, for uh, spending time with us on this Resurrection Sunday. We don't take it for granted that you could be anywhere. You could be anywhere. You could be on, on anybody's Zoom. You could be on any anybody's Facebook page, anybody's YouTube. What you chose to be a part of what Double Portion Kingdom Ministry is doing on this Resurrection Sunday 2021. So we just want to thank each and every one of you uh, from the bottom of our hearts for just being with us this morning um, here on location in Baton Rouge at my at my sister's home. She just got up and joined us. Good morning, sister. How are you? Good morning, brother. Okay. okay. So uh, the disciples could have told the world that they made it all up, that it was a hoax to avoid their deaths. But instead, they made it clear that they rather die than turn their backs on Jesus. Double portion this morning, I'm asking you, don't turn your back on Jesus. Uh, don't turn your back on Jesus. How far are you going with Jesus this morning? I leave you with that question. How far will I go with Jesus? And my answer is, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. The songwriter said, Uncle Richard, if it costs me my life, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with Jesus. So thank you so much, uh, people of God. Have go and have a, 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 a wonderful uh, time with your families. Enjoy this beautiful resurrection day. Uh, continue to walk in faith, walk in favor, but walk in the peace of God. That peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's only obtained by what? Seeking first ye the kingdom of God. I say again this morning, especially on this resurrection Sunday, is not about religion, but it's about relationship. Holy Spirit, do you know him? Do you know him for yourself? It's not about grandma's relationship. It's about your relationship with Holy Spirit. Do you know him? If you don't know him, I admonish you as you walk through this week in your daily prayers, ask God. Mm -mm, I hear you, God. Everybody, put your hands up for me. Put your hands up. Raise your hands. God, we come today on this resurrection 2021. Now, God, we can do nothing without you, but all things through Christ who gives us strength. So God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus for a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost in each and every person that's with us in the sound of my voice. God, uh, endow them, anoint them with a fresh filling of fire, God. Move in them right now in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that each and every person Within the sound of my voice is a fire-filled, baptized believer in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Shalom. You would let go what word back. We'll work again I 
know the blood is still. 